sorry guys. Can you hear me? Am I in the call? All right. Apologies there. I went to hit record and it kicked me out of the call. I'm back in now. So it's time to, we're gonna get started now. Um so welcome to today's webinar. It is January 10th, and we're going to be talking, it's going to be more of a discussion today, actually, than a webinar. The topic is, what do you need, what tools do you need to be successful in your field? I want to talk to you about, you know, how we, as, a, as an organization, and as your mentors, can help you and provide you with the resources that you need to be successful, and then how can you, as youth leaders in your own countries, um, contribute back to other, you know, to raising up the next generation of leaders. So, um, one thing, uh, I'm Sarah, the coordinator or director of Online Youth Exchange, and I really want this to be a participatory web, uh, discussion more so than a webinar. I want everyone to get involved. I've got a couple things prepared for you today, but really it's going to be very discussion oriented. Now, what started off this um, <clears throat> this idea to um, talk to you about this today was, well, first of all, I need more people to sign up for webinars, and I did have someone for today's webinar. So I really, really, really encourage you to, um, I need you to participate more and sign up for webinars if you haven't already given one. It's not that intimidating. I mean, <laughs> I sent you the, the email 12 hours ago that I did today, and okay, great, I don't have a ton prepared, but it's certainly, it's not, it's not an intimidating experience to present. Um, it's actually a really cool experience. Um, even if, you know, English isn't your first language, there's no need to, you know, be worried about your speaking ability. Uh, we interviewed you all, you're all more than capable of speaking English. Um, I understand it's totally fine to be nervous about it. I know I was the first time I gave a presentation in another language, but you know we're all here to learn, and so no one's going to be criticizing you for that. Um, second, the topic of the webinar: um, pick something you know, pick something that you're already doing in your community that you think that you can kind of distill down to something that can be a lesson something that others can learn from. And that's, I think, the best way to do a webinar. Um, I know in, in college, I was always the person who was writing a paper for two different classes on the same topic. That's kind of what I'm looking for from you. I don't want unique material that you have to spend hours and hours researching. I want you to talk about what you know. And so um, the, the online news exchange is a great place to showcase your knowledge and share that with others. So I just want to encourage you in that to sign up for some webinars and if you have any questions, you can always reach out to myself or to your mentor. All right, next order of business is the topic of our webinar today. So I'm going to share um, a couple things that inspired, you know, the other couple things that inspired me to talk about this topic is um, one, a couple of volunteers at Care About Climate and I, uh, those of us in our um, leadership team or the management team of Online Needs Exchange this year, as well as a couple others at the organization, are really looking at how we can make next year's Online Needs Exchange more accessible, um, easier to manage, and, um, you know, have really good, quality, high quality content. So one of the things we're looking at is, I'll give you a little inside scoop, is we're looking to create an online course and have all the modules online so you can watch them at your pace. You know, you're gonna get the consistent content and it's already uploaded, so you're not waiting on me to send it out to you. So if you're, you know, working ahead on your project, you can get your project done, you know, in, two months instead of six months. Um, that's something we're working on. And 
really want to get your feedback on what the curriculum should look like. We've got some ideas that we're already working on, but we want to hear from you and uh, get your feedback on that. The other thing that inspired me for this call today is all day yesterday, I kept hearing the same topic brought up in three different instances. So the idea is that as a leader, you should be opening up opportunities for those, you know, coming up below you. Um, and, you know, part of leadership is bringing people up. It's not staying at the top. Leadership is raising other people up. And so I was, um, you know, in a business meeting and someone was talking about how at their company, the, 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 company president has created opportunities for the people that have stuck with him. Uh, you know, at that company, people last for 15, 20 years at the same company. And so you think like there's only so much, they can only promote you so high because they run out of opportunity. But this businessman, he has expanded his business in different ways so that, you know, the people who have worked with him for 15, 20 years, who stood by his side and, you know, let him be their leader, they get some leadership experience as well. They get to run their own business within his business, per se. They get to open a franchise or branch of his business. And they were really thankful for that. The second time I heard it, I was actually um, talking with this with some of our other mentors, Omi from Nigeria. He um, actually, he was actually, um, his office is right down the street from where I was having that other meeting. And because uh, he's doing an internship here in the United States. And so the two of us met for lunch. And all lunch, we were talking about this topic of how, as a leader, especially a youth leader, you need to know when to step aside from your youth leadership responsibilities and let others in. He was talking about, you know, an example of someone who's, you know, in their 30s and still trying to take control of youth activities instead of letting someone in their teens or 20s take over. When we do that, if, if we're not training up new leaders, and it's not only a discourtesy to ourselves, but to others in the organization as a whole. So if you, you know, take in leadership of something for a decade, and you haven't raised other leaders below you, when you finally do lead, there's not going to be anyone to replace you in that organization. No one can be able to take your job unless you train them for it before you go. And so to train enough people to take over your job, that uh, delegation piece of it, that's really important to leadership and management because that's how you create you know, a, a new opportunity for the people below you so they can take, you know, so they can be raised up and have the same opportunities that you have. So uh, leadership is not about being selfish. It's not about just hoarding control. It's about letting go of control, of delegating, of raising up others. It's kind of the concept we came to. And so we want to make sure that, you know, within online youth exchange, we're raising up new leaders. Um, I'm not going to be the person in charge of this program forever, so I want to make sure that this is a program that can sustain itself, that after I lead, it can continue. That's more important to me than me controlling the program. So I want uh, to raise up other leaders. So if any of you are looking to get involved with something like this, um, you know, next year we want your input. We want you to record one of our modules for our online classes, things like that. The last thing that I heard about leadership, and I'm going to play you a clip from a podcast I was listening to. This is, um, we'll be hearing from a couple comedians who worked for this uh, prestigious comedy club in the United States called Second City. It's one of the only paying um, stand-up or improv groups in the United States. So if you you want to be a comedian in the U.S. In, or Canada, actually. It, they operate in Canada as well. 
the, the best way for you to be successful is to work for this truth because then, you know, you're making income off your work. So you're not just, you know, interning or, you know, doing unpaid volunteer work to get experience. You're actually getting paid and able to pay your bills. And so having that, you know, that stress removed and being paid for your work helps tremendously. So they're talking about how in this circle, there aren't a lot of minorities represented. So not a lot of uh, black, Asian, or, or Latin Americans working in this space. And so how do they create opportunities for them? So I'm going to play the clip for you now. Uh, let me know if you're having trouble hearing, and I can go back, and we can listen to it again. All right? Well, we're some big believers in any walk through the door. Can't prop it open. Um, I really personally, I, Angela, uh, really personally hate people who walk through the door that look like them. You know, uh, Hold on, I pause. Okay, and, and you know, you're black. Y'all uh, have to pay up a I don't understand really well, sorry. Did you not understand the content or was the audio not clear? The audio was not clear enough. Shoot, I'm sorry. Okay, so um, they were talking about this concept of leaving the door open. So um, I don't think I can get the audio any clearer, I don't think. Um, so I'm just going to kind of repeat and summarize what they were talking about. So th there's this concept of leaving the door open, so that when you get to a position um, that doesn't allow a lot of people like you into, leave the door. You, you need to walk. You need to walk through this door into this opportunity. Leave that door propped open. So you want to leave the door open so other people like you can also get into that space. It's kind of like um, if someone holds the elevator door open for you, you're going to hold it open for the person behind you so that they can also get in. It's like that. In spaces where you're the only youth who's represented or, you know, you finally get uh, an organization to accept you as a youth participant, as a you know, a youth representative or youth voice. If you're the only one in the council who um, gets, who's, you know, the environmental voice, don't hold on to that position forever. You gotta let other people in so that you're not the only one, but that you're the first one. 
you know, being the first one flying, being the only one, you don't want that. You want to help other people like you to get in. So she gave the example of, you know, in, in scripts that she would write for the comedy club. And these scripts would go into an archive for, you know, generations to come of com future comedians where they would use that script and they would use it word for word. And so she would say in her script, as a black woman, dot, 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 just throw that in there anytime she could, because that meant that anytime there was, you know, they were doing that script, they had to cast a black woman in that role. And so that gave them more opportunities, more parts for black women to play because there weren't a lot of black women that were, you know, in that space. And so the more often you do that, the more opportunities you give to, um, you know, people who look like you. So in our case, oftentimes, there's only one slot for youth at conferences, or, you know, there's five scholarships that are going out for a global conference, and only five youth get the chance to attend this conference. If you've attended twice in the past, you don't need that third uh, opportunity a third time. You can let someone else step up, let them take the take that opportunity. You know, open that space up for them. In Yungo, in the for the conference of the parties, in the UN climate change talk, there's been a recent push to uh, really work on this because you know. We're not always doing it. And so one thing that they've done now is that they create a specific number of, of scholarship opportunities have to go to people who, um, who have never been involved in this work before on the global stage, who've never been involved with new and FCC work before. They're going to be the first ones to get uh, a scholarship because we want to, you know, we know that there's going to be, you know, there's people who have been in this for years now and have been working for maybe eight plus years on the UN climate change work, and they're going to grow it. The, you know, the day they hit 35 years old, they're too old to be taking a spot. And so how can we raise up new people so that when they are, you know, aged out, there's new leaders constantly uh, flowing for this. Another example is um, in a forest. Um, if you clear the ground and don't let any sap, you know, new growth uh, under the big tall oak trees, then your habitat has no longevity. Your habitat's dead from the moment you, you know, plow underneath those trees and clear it out. Because if you don't have a space for you know, the acorns from those oak trees to grow into new trees. You, you've lost, as soon as these trees die, you're done. You have no more forest. And so having layers in a forest is something that I, in my work, in ecological restoration, have to, you know, educate our customers on. We have to tell them, you know, if you don't plant new trees every year or every other year, you're going to have problems down the road when these die. You're just going to have no trees. And so uh, just like, you know, we have to keep planting trees, we have to keep training up youth leaders. So I want to open the floor to you all, and I want to hear from you about what you need to succeed and different ways that we can uh, promote trainings and other things for, for um, future youth, whether it's, you know, we're talking about ourselves, what we need personally, or talking about what the, the volunteers that work with you need, or, or you know, children that you work with need. So I think the the thing with leadership is always uh, how you say 
before you need to have a uh, open door or run a, run on um, applications that kind of stuff because it's important that people have the opportunity to enter in your organization in your plan or your project uh, when they can do because um, when you put uh, some difficult uh, like a checklist for enter in the in your organization the people is going to be disencouraged for for entering your organization so i think it's important that we have the capacity or the disposition to prepare the people when they are in our organization not we need not to be wait i have music in the background sorry um i think it's important that we could do formation or training to people when we are leaders we could have training um during the process of our projects or during the process of our organizations is because we are mostly voluntary organizations it's not um, possible to have uh, the same people from the start to the to the finish or it's not possible uh, have all the people that we need all the all the time so have an open door is one of the most important stuff for being a good leader in this kind of works. Thanks, Alvaro. And I want to point out that Alvaro is the one who's going to be leading the curriculum development uh, for online youth exchange next year. So if you ever have you know, ideas or, or recommendations for him, please share those. Now, who else would like to share? Come on, I know you guys said you want to learn about that, you know, struggle. So many of you are already in leadership positions. So I want to hear what, you know, what has helped you to grow into that position as well? And um, and how can you translate that to the people working with you? Um, what I think others, others might need um, with regards to this leadership is like people need to be empowered and like um, people also need to get um, the right information because more often than not, if people don't know what they are doing, it would be difficult for them to, to like to have the desired results. And if they don't have the like, um, let's say a good intention of doing something, it will also be difficult alongside and i also believe that people should be people should be guided like they should have a guidance um in in whatever they are doing and as such it would help them in their um, future endeavors with regards to these campaigns and this volunteer work that they do so these these are some of the things that i think i want to share yeah thanks chair you welcome, um, Sarah. Another thing that you remind me of is, um, you know, within our own circle, within the people who are yeah. in our like, exchange, we, there's yeah. ways that we can help raise each other up as well. And so, you know, yes. sharing scholarship opportunities with the larger groups, you know, as you come across them. Um, if I ever yeah. hear about grants or things like that, uh, or like education, I'll share those. Yeah. Um, 
you know, helping people to um, get in touch with other people that can help them with their with their growth. So I know I've, you know, with Kierno, for example, I've yeah. said to him, like, hey, I have this person yeah. who's looking to get in contact with someone in the Gambia. You're also yeah. from the Gambia. Do you know someone that can help them? And, yeah. you know, he'll help them out. And so just mm -hmm. that little, you know, just creating connections for each other is a huge way that we can help each other out and work together. Yeah, that's true. Thanks so much, Sarah. I saw in this chat that Julieta Rodrigo say that it's important to have um, a faster response in the in the assignment response from the mentor. I think that it's important always respond to your people um, faster than you can. I think. Yes, and please let me know if you're having trouble hearing back from your mentors. Um, we want, we, we're here to help you. And um, I want to make sure that this program is successful. Alvaro wants to make sure this program is successful. All of us in the leadership group, you know, and your mentors want to be there for you. But, you know, they also have other commitments. You know, they're working full time or in school or things like that. And so, making sure that uh, you, you know, you let me know and, and that you are giving them, you know, enough time to respond to you. So if, you know, your webinar is the next day or, or, you know, your, your assignment is due, to, you know, tomorrow, you're not just starting to ask some questions as well. So we can definitely improve and I'll reach out to our mentors and see how they can be more assistant um, and make sure that they're, uh, responding and reaching out to you as well. You know, the owners should just be on you, but we want you to be doing a lot of the, you know, the legwork of this program because it's for your benefit. And I mean, I definitely learn from being a mentor as well. I, you know, get new opportunities that come from mentorship, but we really, you know, we really want you to show your leadership potential and, uh, and be uh, reaching out to you So come on, there's a lot more of you on this call and I haven't spoken up yet. I want to hear a little bit from each of you because it's going to be important in how we design our curriculum. Right, um, Alvaro, did you want to go through just what the different uh, modules are looking like, just the, the four, the four uh, courses that we're planning on having? Okay, um, we are planning four models for the for the next year because well, no for this year because I think uh, the system the actual system need to be improved. Uh, chaos depends on the time of the mentors and the mentors, so we are going to have a new system. I think more based on e-learning, so you could do the segment when you have the time uh, during the, the full period of the course. Um, we are planning to have um, at least four models and every model have uh, four, four classes or little courses. So the first model 
is based on the beginnings or the basis, the basis, basic stuff from climate change. We think that um, sometimes we have the opportunity and we have the uh, the will to have to do something about the climate change, but we need um, a little bit of formation. Um, formation about uh, what is climate change, uh, what is a bioma, what is um, uh, then gen um, um, is spacing, uh, is pa uh, uh, for example, animals in danger of extinctions and all that kind of stuff that is basic to an environmentalist person to know. So we, we could have um, um, a basic course in the beginning. In the second model, we have um, economics. We know that today the economics view of the planet is one of the mo my major problems. Uh, some people address this problem to capitalism. Other people address to um, neoliberal uh, capitalism. And other people um, address just to irresponsibility of the depredation of resources. So what is in the economics of um, the system is uh, we could blame the capitalism or the irresponsibility or a neoliberal system. What is the problem? What are the solutions in economics view? For example, at my country in Chile, we have now a new law for recycling and recovering the stuff from, from companies. So uh, this new law uh, gives you money for recovering the stuff that you produce as waste for your company. So that kind of stuff is a capitalist form to have a, a change. So what with the economics is very difficult. And um, we need to address the reality of the most affected people with the climate change is, is the minorities as, um, for example, ethnics, um, indigenous ethnics or Native Americans, Afro-Americans and that kind of uh, minorities. And in, in the most way, and the most affected persons by the climate change, because they are the majority of the poor people are women. So uh, in economics for um, climate change, one of the most affected peoples are women. So this is a gender uh, problem too. Um, because for example, when you want to when you live in a island or in a coastal city um, and the level of the sea is rising, you will lose your house. When you have the money, you could just buy a house in another place. When you don't have the money, you lose your house and you are going to be homeless. And the most of homeless people um, from the climate change will be women then it's a different than the actuality when the most of homeless people are men. So um, this is a big problem uh, today. We, we could have um, a third part of the program that will address um, how to do projects that um, change something because sometimes we, we plan projects or we have good ideas, but when we don't, we don't know how to do a project with them, uh, we lose that idea. Uh, and that is a problem because um, I see too many times people with really, really good ideas. And sometimes, for example, uh, you have resources in your country, or you have um, resources from a company or something. For example, in Chile, we have resources uh, for uh, um, environmental stuff, for climate change, from Coca-Cola company, 
and for the government, the central government and for regional governments. So how you're going to work with this? How you, you're you going to have um, a good project then that is resolving something in your local community in a good way. Uh, because you need to have a good set of go goals. Um, you need to convince some uh, stakeholders. You need to agree with decision makers, people, because you need to people then that is effective uh, working and taking the decisions in your community, for example when you have uh, your representatives or uh, your congressmen, that kind of people with you, the work is easier. But with your local community, your mayor is important, for example. Um, and um, in a firm model, we, we will speak about um, being effective and to have, um, for example, how can you a conversation um, in a decision making place in a good way to the people be involved with your ideas so that is i think the most of the program if you think you we need to add something more or make some changes we will send to you the, the little program uh, we are we are working this um, weekend in the program because i will be with sarah here in the u.s so you have new ideas or you think, oh, you need to add this uh, in the new program, please uh, let you know. Let us know, please. Thank you. Thanks, Alvaro, for sharing. What do you guys think about that curriculum? Does that seem inclusive enough? Are there things that you think we're missing? Are there things that you think, you know, maybe don't need to be covered as extensively? I wanted to add um, one thing about the minorities, both, in, both what Alvaro and I said, those are the minorities in our each of our countries. So, um, you know, indigenous people, um, Afro-Americans Afro and um, Asian-Americans are going to be the minorities in Chile and the U.S. Um, that's not going to be the case necessarily in your country. So I just wanted to clarify when we said that, that, you know, that's the case in our country. And whoever's a minority in your country is most likely going to be the most vulnerable group. Yeah, sorry. Um... When I speak about minorities, it was about Chile. Today in Chile, the minorities, uh, the principal minorities are um, indigenous people like Mapuche in the south of Chile and Afro-Americans that uh, came from IT and other places in Central America or Caribbean that are migrating to Chile and now they are a minority um, that is addressing the poverty in Chile. So in your countries, who's the minority group? Was there someone that, is there a group that you think um, would need or um, should be getting extra assistance um, that can be maybe a target audience for your next environmental program? Come on, guys, I have to spend the whole weekend with Alvaro, so I don't want to hear him talk any, you know, we don't need to have, just have the two of us talking. <laughs>
All right. Last question. Is there anyone who's interested in working um, or contributing to the curriculum? Um, you'll have, you know, exclusive access to what we come up with. You'll be able to help, um, you know, record some of the modules. You can have your face on that uh, in those classes if you'd like. Help write, you know, you're going to help write the educational material that's going to uh, train the next generation of climate change leaders. So we really want your input. Really hoping for more discussion on this call. But uh, please feel free to reach out to either Albert or I after this call um, with your ideas, your recommendations, um, you know, anything that you can do to, to, you know, contribute to this process. All right. Got it? Anyone? Yeah, I think I would I would I would wanna to help to with regards to the you know to the curriculum. Thanks, Chair No. You're welcome, I'll reach sir. out to you um so we can get you involved in this process right away. Yeah, no problem. Hi. Katarina, you're going to say something too? Yes. Um I think the curriculum sounds very nice because you have different logical steps um, going on in the year. And I think it also might be an idea that towards the end of the program, you can maybe choose uh, different subjects and your project groups are divided based on what kind of subject you would choose. I'm not sure if that's possible, but maybe, um, then the connections can get a little stronger because people get connected to uh, projects that are similar to theirs. So that's a little idea. Maybe. I understand you then you you're thinking to put in contact different people then is addressing the same ideas but in different countries so yeah, they exactly. will help each other. Yeah exactly. Okay it's a great idea. I will point Thanks. it out here. Great idea. And within, you know, the current OIE program, hopefully you can do that a little bit as well. So if you want to get in contact with, you know, everyone who's working on plastic pollution, let me know and, you know, start a WhatsApp group, send me the link, I'll post it in the, the group chat, and then anyone who's working on plastic pollution can join. So I've done that with, um, you know, my sister will have, oh, I've got two friends who are working on climate change issues, one from Egypt, one from Dominican Republic. Can I have them reach out to you? And I say, yeah, of course. And then, you know, we just start chatting about what we know and what we're working on and how we can, you know, share those best practices. So definitely, uh, you can, we can start doing that now as well. Yes, sounds very good. Yeah. Okay, from Eric, um, he put in the in the conversation in the chat. They they say I think that the curriculum is great, and we could identify some local indigenous practice in our communities on ways to fight climate change. I understand that we could um, add some opinions from indigenous people from our different countries. Um, in climate change solutions, because I think it could be a, a good idea. For example, in Chile, we have the Mapuches, and they have uh, some system of, uh, of uh, work with the with the um, agriculture that are not common in the rest of, of the country. And here in the US, I think the Navajos, they have a system of agriculture too. So it could be interesting to have um, a little videos with that opinions from indigenous people, for example. I think Thank that you. is. Yeah, I think that is the Eric idea. Eric, are you agree with me? That is your idea, or like the core of this.
right. Well, thank you all so much for your contributions, for your ideas. You know, I really wanted to have a great opportunity, you know, the rest of the OIE program to be a great opportunity for you to learn from each other and share ideas. So thanks for all those who participated and spoke up today for this discussion. And keep sending uh, Alvaro and I your ideas of how we can improve this program for this year or next year. All right? Thank you so much. Yeah, please send your ideas. It's important for us working with everyone because it's not our ideas, it's the program ideas. I think it's very important when we share the ideas. So we are we are not the experts. Um, we have a little bit more uh, walking in this patch, but all ideas are important because with the ideas we could start to work um, in plans, in better programs, educational programs, but we need your ideas. We need you to talk with us, please. That is really, really important. All right, a huge thank you to Alvaro for all the work he's been doing on the curriculum. He you know, wrote a grant application for us. He wrote out a lot of the outline of the program. And so he's been really important to this process and making the program better for you each year. In a quarter mile, turn left. So um, that's it for our call today. Thank you. And our next call is going to be on the 20th. I'm going to have to send out a or, uh, fix on that email. So the time is, uh, needs to be changed to turn left. 10 o'clock. AM GMT instead of 11 o'clock uh, because, or I'm sorry, instead of the 12 o'clock GMT that I listed for the webinar on the 20th by Muhammad. And that's because uh, I, I put the time wrong. I was waiting for a response and didn't hear back until after I sent it. So thank you so much, everyone, and have a great Turn rest right. of your day.